Mm, yeah. My dad's in there. He just said the same thing. Oh, wow. And what's the last minute? <laughs> yeah, eventually we all need some kind of help. Yeah. I'm in my sixties now, so all the help I can get. Yeah. Me too. Just turned sixty. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be 61 in August. 11. Okay. <laughs> There's lots of rules. Right. Yeah. Hello. Right. Hello. How we doing, William? Hello. Yes, sir. That's me. I've not met you, William. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Good. Are you in a hospital? I am. For yourself? No, sir. I'm visiting my father. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that goes okay. Is he all right? He's improving over yesterday. Thank you for asking. Oh. Well, I, I look forward to getting to know you a little bit more here. My name's Josh. Uh, look forward to Look forward to uh, where he is seven or he is seven peak. Vic, mute yourself. And Nicole, you're on for the is this the first time? I'm so proud. Yes, yeah, so I'm not real sure what I'm doing. Well, you're you're there. I see you. That's all that matters. Um, so with me, I've got a brand new, well, he's not even a new agent. This is Sam Rice. Sam is getting his license and he just so happened to have a little free time today. So he wanted to stop in and get, uh, get, get some training Sit ahead. Some yeah. Ahead of even getting his license. So that's always an option. If you know of anybody, this is just a, a little FYI. If you know of anybody who's interested in getting into real estate, but they don't, they haven't gone through the testing process or they just want to like hear what it's like to be a realtor, feel free to extend an invite to them or shoot me their information. And I can always uh, have a conversation with them or invite them to something like this to see if this is something they might be interested in. But um, Sam and I were just talking about breweries, which is very important as a realtor. Um, not at all, actually, but today we are going to focus on my business. This is going to be, this is going to be a first. So I've never done this. I know I, I use a lot of um, my examples from what's happening within my team, but I've never really shown a light on what my business actually looks like. Uh, as I was talking with Sam, I, I'm considered, our team is considered a mega agent team. A mega agent in Keller Williams world is any agent that does more than $10 million in volume in a year. So our team last year, we did about 11 million. This year, we're on pace to smash that. Um, and so we're excited about what the future holds for us here. 
but we want to pull back the curtain a little bit and show you newer agents what it looks like to get from where I started four years ago at zero transactions, zero knowledge, right where you guys were at, you probably have more knowledge than I did, um, to becoming something that is super lucrative while also giving you plenty of time um, to do things that you want, some freedom and flexibility in your schedule. I am hoping a bunch more people pop on because this is a, this is a good one to attend. So I'm gonna turn this right here. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing today is sharing some screens with y'all. Uh, and these screens are aimed at uh, just, like I said, peeling back the curtain so you can see exactly what tools I use, my team uses to track success, but also what, like a little bit about what that success looks like in terms of execution. Okay. So I additionally, I mentioned in the email that I sent to everybody, that we're gonna be revamping what the coaching program looks like in terms of this call. Normally we spend an hour talking. I wanna be respectful to everyone's time. We're gonna try something a little bit different. We're gonna do a half hour condensed uh, from one to 1.30. And then 1.30 on can just be a bunch of Q and A regarding either the topic that we just covered, such as my business. You can ask me any question about my business that you want. Or we can shift gears and, and talk about anything else that's on your mind. I think it's really important that we respect everyone's time, try to condense the material, and allow opportunity for you guys to have your questions answered. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to get rolling. I hope everyone's having a wonderful week. It is Master's Week. If you are interested in golf at all, Tiger Woods was one under, okay? And that's a big deal. I'm going to start right here. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, okay. What you see before you is not just a rainbow uh, spreadsheet. Um, this is the, the tool that we use to track our transactions. These are all from 2022, okay? And you might be saying to yourself, well, Josh, why? what's with all the color? Um, and I'll explain all that here in a moment. But what I really want to do is, is show you the dollars and cents of what is possible in real estate, okay? Please don't, don't disclose any of this information to anybody else. Some of these things haven't closed yet. More than half have not closed. We currently have about uh, 15 homes in contract. Uh, we've closed about five or six already this year. Uh, what you see here is the person, the client's name. I'm just going to go quick, quick uh, what this is, what you see. The person's name. Now, why is it colored uh, green or blue? It's because I want to track whether or not I'm working with buyers or sellers and what that percentage looks like. So as you can see, we're a little bit heavier on listings than we are on buyers right now, which is pretty similar to what the market's like right now. If we're working with buyers, it's a little harder. If you're working with a seller, it's, it's super easy. So these are the names. As you can see, we've got uh, 21, 22 uh, in contract right now or uh, have, having closed. You see the address. This is important to track. A lot of what I'm talking about right this minute is a system that we've built that I want to encourage you to build into your world. Why? Because when tax time comes, it is super easy for me to give, give my tax guy the dollars that I made and the locations, geographic locations. Each city that we sell in has different tax rates. I am going to assume down in Kentucky, that's the same. So when you, when, if you sell 10 homes in 10 different parts of the state, they're going to each have different tax rates for the municipality it's important to at least notate the address with the city, okay? Now you see a lot of colors on here as well. This is tracking where this closing is coming from. How did I get this transaction? And then we're gonna deep dive into each of these things. So you see uh, a bluish purplish one here, that's a Zillow. I do pay for Zillow leads. You see a, a salmon colored one here. That's a referral. Note, please note, uh, well, uh, probably 75% here of our transactions that we are in contract on or closed so far is a referral. 
There's two kinds of referrals in my world here. There's a referral from a, a, an, another agent. You'll notice that four of these are from another agent. We're gonna talk about how to get those or just a referral from a friend. So uh, Megan and TJ Jones, this, this is a great story. This is how your business can blow up by just knowing one person. Uh, I, was, uh, I was relevant on, prevalent on Facebook and somebody stumbled across my website uh, through Facebook, called me and said that they had a house to buy and a house to sell. Cool, I can absolutely help you with that. We hit it off and lo and behold, after closing, she has now sent me five other pieces of business. This has been in the last two years. So Megan and TJ Jones, our TBD stands for to be determined, the address, it is a new build. So we don't have that address yet, but we do know the dollars and cents here. Uh, they are buying a house and they are going to be listing their house soon. So that's a referral. Other options here, you'll see the, the white ones are simply just sphere of influence. People that I already know, they're not referring themselves, That uh, I already know them. Uh, or it's repeat customer. Fun story. Karen Johnson just bought a house two years ago, just sold it again. Life situation happened, separation. Pat Enright just bought a house a year and a half ago, has to sell now because he broke up with his girlfriend, doesn't need a big house anymore. Okay, what did I do differently than most agents do? We have uh, here in Columbus, we have 9,000 realtors across the city. I would guess that 8,000 of us will sell a home and then drop off the face of the earth to our clients, but not us and not any other agent who wants to be successful in this industry like you all. After you close a deal, you put, them, you put that person in your database and you make sure to drill them at least 36 times in a, in a year by a touch program. We can talk more about the touch program. But at the end of the day, Patrick Enright and I, we didn't hit it off when they bought the house 18 months ago. And he's never responded one single time to any invite that I've ever sent him or any um, messages that I've sent him. However, I was doing the effort. I was doing the work. And when the time came for him to need a realtor again, he called me. So the stuff works. The stuff that I'm talking about works. And it works in, the, uh, in this way. We sold his house. Or we bought his house a year and a half ago for $300,000. And we are in contract uh, 18 months later for 417. That's pretty cool payoff for just staying relevant and for trying to stay top of mind, right? That's the payoff, gross commission income before any uh, splits and stuff. Other ways that I'm accruing this business, uh, Orange is an event. So we did a reverse bold 100 last year where we had 100 people call us in a day. Well, this person was referred to me and I nurtured them and lo and behold, they're building a house now. Almost a 500K house. Cool, came from an event. It's important, honestly, at the end of the day to track where your business is coming from. Can somebody explain why it might be important to track where your business is coming from? Someone take a stab at that. You know what you need to push more on and what you might need to let go. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You know where to focus. You know what's working for you and you know what might not be working for you. So for instance, what might not be working for me is you see zero, any yellow on this page. I don't see a single yellow. My cyber backer, who's my virtual assistant, who's calling from the Philippines, making cold calls on our behalf to try to find off-market properties, we're not closing any deals off that. Maybe that's a waste of my money each month. That's something from a business perspective that I know because I'm tracking it. So start this tracking process while you are young in your business. The other opportunity that you see here is social media. Uh, I only, I'm only listing one as social media, but I guarantee a lot of these people are staying uh, top of, we are staying top of mind with them through social media. Uh, this is a person here who I used to work with long, long ago, but I never really hit it off with them at work. Um, but we're Facebook friends 
And one day they Facebook messaged me and said, hey, can you help me buy a house? We're ready. Sure. So all these different ways of accumulating business and I'll go into more detail on those things. Price, this is the, the price that we're in contract for. You wanna track that obviously. That keeps track of your volume. So when I say I do $10 million a year, at least in volume, this is the purchase price or sales price of the home. GCI is gross commission income. This is what I'm gonna make prior to any commission splits or any referral fees royalty, et cetera. All this is aimed to say, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling back all the curtain, guys. I, I probably shouldn't share this information with you, but I don't care. Um, my goal this year is to sell 100 properties. So I've got room for 100 different lines here. And at the bottom, my total currently, we have almost uh, six and a half mil in volume that's in contract or closed for GCI of almost $200,000. Um, now, some of these things may fall out of contracts. So now that I'm talking about these things, I'm hoping that I'm not jinxing myself. Uh, notes, this is where, especially when you form a team and you start to get bigger and you have a lot of moving parts, meaning a lot of other agents that are helping contribute to this, as you'll notice, not all these transactions are happening through me alone. My team, is, my team is really stepping up. Lauren's got three, Victor's got four, and then I've got the rest. The goal of any team is to have an equal distribution amongst everyone and everyone's pulling their weight, right? On yours, as you start this out, it'll just be you, but you can keep notes in here. If there's a referral fee, for instance, you'll notice that these are referrals that I've received from other agents across the country. How do I receive referrals from across the country? I don't know anyone in Arizona. That's where this one came from. I don't know this person in Cincinnati. That's where this came from. I have no clue who this is in Houston, Texas. I do know these people. I'm going to show you how to get referrals. And then lastly, uh, last two things, I keep track of when the closing date is so that I can keep my head on straight. If you don't have a transaction coordinator like I do, then it's gonna be really important for you to understand especially once you get more than one or two in contract, you will lose track of things easily. That's why it's very important to start early, start while you're young, take two minutes after you get something in contract and put in this information so you don't lose your organization. Additionally, I have two transaction coordinators. So this is where I decide who is taking control of those transactions so I can pay that person for their work. Cool. Um, any questions on this form? This is simply me describing how I keep track of this information. I'm going to move on to how I go about getting this business. Let me start by saying this is a this is four years in the making. I'm on track to close 11 prop. We are on track to close 11 homes this month. 11 homes is more than the average realtor sells in an entire year. How do we do it? I want to encourage you to go back 90 days. What did the start of your year look like? Did January's practices that you were executing lead you to where you are now. Meaning, if I have zero things in contract right now, when I think back to January, who do I have to blame for me not having anything in contract right now? It's always me. I have myself to blame, right? Well, we have 11 in contract. What were we doing in January? What did, our, what did we look like? What you see here is a follow-up grid. This is what my team uses to track things like real estate contacts. We started the year off on fire. And what I mean by that is we started the year off with our fundamentals on lockdown. What I mean by that is I encourage everyone, I don't encourage, I demand everyone on my team is going to get at least 100 real estate contacts every single week. 100 real estate contacts every single week has led them to uh, three transactions closed for Lauren, 
and uh, four, five for Vic. If you're not there, then that's the that's that's what you need to insert into your world. 100 real estate contacts is the game changer. I want to I want to I want to stop and say this. Over the course of this coaching, there is not going to be any silver bullet. There's no magic thing that we are doing differently than anyone else on this call can do. It is sheer work, energy, effort. And if you want to give the work, energy, and effort doing the things you know need to be done, like real estate contacts, then you will perform. And if you don't want to do those things, then you might scrape by, but you're probably not going to be satisfied with the results. I want us all to be satisfied with the results of our efforts. So let me break this down. This is Victor's tab here. Oh, Victor, wow. I hope, Thank you. Victor, I hope you don't mind me picking on you here. This is, this is a good thing. We track where those real estate contacts come from, notice all these things here. There's so many different ways that we can get real estate contacts. What is a real estate contact? Can somebody explain what a real estate contact is? Maybe this is the problem. Any, Nobody any, knows. any conversation or contact that's made with a person that um, real estate is involved in, in the interaction. Yep, 100%. So what can that come in the form of? Well, it can come in the call in the form of a, a mojo is our cold call power dialer. I am working on getting a power dialer for Kentucky. A power dialer simply allows us to cold call a certain geographic area or a list of numbers by using a power dialer, which makes that dialing process streamlined and simple. You don't have to plug in all these numbers to dial. It calls, hangs up, calls again. It's super efficient. We wanna be efficient in my business. I want you to be efficient too, so you can go out and live your best life when you're done with your lead gen each day. Notice what time his lead gen starts. It's pretty consistent. It's either nine to 11, 12 to one, 12 to two, Depending on what he needs, notice he even threw in some Saturday calls because he um, didn't get enough on Tuesday. Okay, so we can call, we, we can receive calls. That's, a, that's the best way to get a real estate contact, receiving a call. Um, or just a good old fashioned phone dial of your sphere. You could have in-person contacts, which is probably even better than any of these other resources because you're seeing people face to face. Email correspondence and email needs to be back and forth. It cannot be one way. I cannot send out 100 emails and receive zero in return and count that as a real estate contact. That's why I never got them. There you go. There needs to be, a, so in, in regards to that, if you put more calls to action in your emails, you might receive more feedback. Calls to action meaning, hey, respond to me and I'll do this, something like that. Other ways, social media. So he's using Instagram messages. Not a ton, but it's a good way to diversify. So he's on social media. Other, these are follow-ups. Uh, we can use text message, events, et cetera. Showings are the best way. This week, he must not have put his showings in or he didn't get a single showing, which I find hard to believe. I never really count those as contacts because I've already counted them in like phone contacts or text. Okay. Set it up. That makes sense. Comes. You don't want to double dip. I like that. You're being honest. And that's the key. Be honest with your reporting. If you don't have some sort of system, a mechanism for you to keep track of your real estate contacts and where you're getting them from, then please take that away from today's call. We should have systems for everything in our world. And especially this first year, the more systems I can put into place, the better off I'm going to be going forward. But at the end of the week, each week, I should be able to look down and say, okay, I got my 100. Or look at this. He got 125. You think he's hungry? He's hungrier than you guys. Unless you can beat him. And I bet you can. We should have a contest someday. I like contests. I'm a competitor. Hmm. My, my, my wheels are turning here. Okay, we're going to have a contest soon. Who can get the most contacts in a week? We've done this before and it was really fun. Anyways, um, 
Don't let Victor be hungrier than you are. So this is our tracking around this. Uh, when I said when I said go back 90 days, we started January off with a bang. We started tracking this stuff diligently. And if you didn't hit your hundred tar your hundred goal, then I I take leads from you on my team. Self discipline and allowing me to be a good coach. There's this reporting tool that we have in our coaching program where you report as uh, uh, San Rio should be sending you, or it should come from my email, a reporting tool through a Google form each week. It's tracking how many real estate contacts you've made, how many showings you've gone on, et cetera, because I want to be able to see these things so I can reach out to you one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, great job last week on your lead gen. Or I can say, hey, you didn't get your goal on lead gen, what got in the way? And we can have a serious, honest conversation about that so that I can lead you to where you wanna be. Help me help you. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to how hungry are you? Another device that we use or system that we use to help us get real estate contacts, we started in January, was the DTD2 method of conversations. What does that mean? Let me see here. I'm going to Google it. DT, D2. We've talked about this a little bit in the past. DT, D2 is simply a system where you, uh, how do I blow that up? You reach out to two letters. Let's, let's watch this real quick. Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a great day. No, um, let's not watch this real quick. That's okay. that's gonna be too long. Uh, DTD2, you pick two letters a week. So week one is A and W. So basically any person in your database that has a last name that starts with an A or a W. So let's say Mark Andrews. If I knew a Mark Andrews, I would call that person and just follow up, do a care call, do a, hey, just following up on how you're doing starting the new year. We started that conversation in January and over the course of 13 weeks, you will touch base with your entire sphere. Why 13 weeks? Because that's a quarter. And in a quarter, you're supposed to call everyone in your world one time each quarter for a grand total of at the end of the year, four phone calls. <clears throat> this is just part of our touch program. So this is how we're getting to 11 transactions closed in a month because we're doing the work that we should all be doing. And this is a system that helps us get there. So uh, consistency is key when doing all this work. Things that will lead us to these numbers are consistency. Go back 90 days. Are you proud of where you are currently? And if not, I bet the recipe wasn't very good 90 days ago. You can impact 90 days out from now, starting today. It all comes down to real estate contacts. It all comes down to doing these things that we're talking about here. So like uh, social media, we've, we've had many coaching calls about social media. I'm not gonna talk about it uh, too much longer other than to say, my recipe for success, if you want to steal shamelessly, is to post every single day and to have a system in place. I've shared my system before. I do hire somebody to help me there because I don't have the time nor luxury with three kids running around to, to post everything, right? Starting out, you may have to do it yourself. Play red light, green light. Let's see. Can everyone please mute? <clears throat> Somebody is not muted. There we go. All right. Uh, moving on. I mentioned referrals. Would you all like to get referrals out of thin air? Let me show you how. This is KW Command. Has everybody seen KW Command? This is our technology platform, our one-stop shop for everything you really need. Well, there is a referrals tab over here. And I would encourage everyone, even while we're on the call, if you'd like, follow along here. If you want to pull up uh, agent.kw.com, you will get to command. There is a tab over here on the left. It says referrals. Click on that. <clears throat> 
Next, we're gonna go to map. This is a fun exercise for you existing agents. Go to map. This is, I'm, I'm doing this as if I'm looking for a referral partner, meaning I have somebody that wants to buy or sell a home in a different part of the world that I'm not in and I can't help them. So I'm gonna look for somebody that can. But for the case, for the sake of this practice, we're gonna look ourselves up. So we're gonna look in Westerville, Ohio. Now, if you're in Kentucky, don't look up Westerville, Ohio. Uh, and we're gonna type in my name. There we go. I What I'm doing this for is I wanna show you how to get leads in referrals from other agents across the globe. If you do not have this information in your bio, you are missing out on potential referrals. This is another one of those highlighter or gold star items that I would leave this call and immediately jump into my settings in command and fix if I don't have this up to date. Number one, I'm showing that I'm productive. I want to say this is like a rolling 12 month total. I don't know how they calculate it, honestly. But this shows that I'm, in, I'm actively selling homes. This bio piece here is very important as well because it shows that I'm a human and not some robot, that I have a personality. And honestly, my bio sucks. Like this sucks. Look at this. It's like two sentences. It sucks. You, I need to revisit this. However, even with a sucky bio, I'm still getting, uh, I've got four referrals in there from other agents. A lot of agents would kill for four closings in a whole year, right? This is not some magic thing that, I, that only I have access to. You have access to this as well. So why is this important? Let me go back. Let's say I'm looking for an agent in Denver. Denver, Colorado. I've got a client, let's just say for case, of, case in point, I've got a person looking in Lakewood, Colorado, near Denver. Okay, I click on that. And then they want to live near Union Square. Okay, cool. I clear out my search there. Well, let's see if Terry Oliver might be a good fit for this for my clients. I click on Terry Oliver. Well, they're active, but they don't sell much. Bio. Okay, he's got a good bio here. If I was to read that and it was a good fit, maybe I call him. But honestly, I probably want somebody who sells more than three, three homes a year. So let's go back. Let's look at Yasmina. She's got nothing. Do you think I have any respect for this by this uh, this person? Not nah, not necessarily because I don't know anything about him. She has done herself a huge disservice, and you have too if your profile does not uh, have anything in it. Let's look at Patrick Smith. He's at least got a bio, but I can't tell if he's productive at all. Kaylee, Callie. Okay, she's done a little bit more business, and there's a bio. What I'm getting at here is this is what I look at when I send a referral out. Other agents, the 180,000 agents around the globe that are looking for a referral partner in Westerville, Ohio, or in Owensboro, or in Heartland, uh, at Heartland, you guys put your best foot forward. Be the one agent who has this stuff built out. If you need help with these things, either talk to Rachel, Cody, or myself, and we will help you get this figured out. Fair? Because this business comes to me without me lifting a finger. And if I look at it, I've got, let's see here, 170 plus 390 plus 235 plus 350. I've got over a million dollars, if my math is right, over a million dollars in referred business. And then the cool thing is once you make a really good relationship with a referral partner like this, this group here, these guys have referred me three or four pieces of business in the past because we've taken care of people. So now we have this alliance where I send them business in Cincinnati, they continue to send me business it will only blossom into more. And that's all this real estate business is, guys. Again, there's no silver bullet. There's nothing special that I'm doing. I'm just doing, I'm, I'm hitting the nail 
our team is hitting the nail by doing the things we know we need to be doing. And then over time, business will start to come to you. Are there any questions about referrals or the, the command profile thing? All right, if not, no worries. I um, want to make sure I covered all those things. Uh, okay, other things that lead to business. So I mentioned the referrals, good to go there. Uh, referrals from your sphere, make sure that you are touching your sphere consistently. We have, some people call it a touch program, like a 36 touch program. Does everybody understand what I mean when I say a touch program? I'm just gonna spell it out. If you don't know, every time I communicate with, an, with another person, that's called a touch, communicating about real estate. My goal, let's say, let's say Alex is in my sphere. My goal is to hit Alex at least 36 times a year via a real estate touch. And that can come in a multitude of different ways. Phone call should be at least four of those. In person should be at least two. Events can happen where I, I touch them maybe 12 times a year. We, my team, we find success in events. This Sunday, we're doing an Easter egg hunt and the Easter bunny is gonna show up. It's something that I would be doing anyways with my kids. So why not be the daggone Easter bunny? And why not get some business out of it by meeting total strangers? So we post to this event, right? I have like, uh, there's 27 groups signed up so far. We just, we just posted it this week. I only know like four or five of these groups. So I'm going to get a chance to meet a lot of new strangers. Do you think that's going to help my business? 100%. Anyways, going back to the touch program, we should be doing events like I just said. We can be texting them. We can be emailing them. We can be sending them mailers. We can send them postcards. We can send them holiday cards. We can, at the holidays, get, drop off cookies, pies, whatever your shtick is. End of the day, 36 touches. If you didn't know that, now you know it. Create a system. That four phone calls a year thing, that system comes from the DTD2 that we just talked about. An email system might look like something like a monthly newsletter. That's 12 touches plus four. That's 16 touches right there between the phone call and the email. So then how do we pepper in more? Well, I just told you we have 12 events a year. That's 12 invites at least. That's 12 more touches. But in all honesty, we're hitting people way more than that with each event because we're sending the initial invite, a reminder invite, a follow-up invite the day before, a follow-up text the morning of, a face-to-face -face when they come to the meeting, uh, the event, a follow-up afterwards appreciating them for coming, a follow-up a week later saying, here's our next event coming up. That's seven touches for one person for one event. So in reality, we don't stop at 36. We are probably more like 60 or 70. I should really spend some time counting how many touches I get. Does that sound like a lot of work? It is, but you don't have to do it all at, the, at, the, at, at one time, right? Let's create some systems and let's ease into it. But this is an open book test on how to be successful in real estate. Do the things I'm talking about. Does anything I'm talking about sound like rocket science? Shouldn't, because I'm not very smart. Um, I, I will share also kind of peeling back the curtain again. I, as I told you earlier, I hired somebody because I, I, I coach agents like you now, that takes a lot of time. I lead a team, that takes a lot of time. And I'm still selling homes and still a father and husband. I wanna be present for all those things. So I don't necessarily have time to cold call anymore as much as I wanted to. So I've hired that out. When you start having enough closings, you can hire certain things out that you don't wanna do anymore. Now, do I still do lead generation? Yeah, my team will tell you I, I text people. I'm on social media all the time. We're, we're always finding ways to, to find new business. But now I'm in, I'm in the game of let's, let's supply leads to my team so that they can do a lot of the stuff that maybe I don't have the time to do anymore. It's called leverage. 
as you build your business, you'll be able to add leverage into your life and into your business. But for now, it starts with us having to do a lot of the work ourselves. Um, another thing, aside from just Zillow paid leads, I am investing $300 a month into this thing called RISE, R-I-S-E. They work with third-party lead sources, OpCity, O-P-C-I-T-Y, OpCity, and Ojo, O-J-O. RISE pairs with those two lead sources to train me and my team on how to be better converters of online leads. And with that comes 12 to 15 leads per month. So I pay 300 bucks a month to get these leads. I literally just started today. Uh, I got my first phone call, uh, which was a lead who wanted to rent, but in the future buy. So it's going to encourage me and my team to exercise our nurturing skills. Nurturing simply means it's not right now business. So you need to take care of that person over a period of time until they're ready to buy or sell or rent, whatever. Um, also, we do Facebook ads, paid Facebook ads. Uh, it's a good viable resource for us to get leads. They are not always the best leads. In fact, most of them downright suck. But it's a person that I'm now in contact with or trying to get in contact with that I didn't know before for normally about a dollar a lead. All right. So going back to, I want to share my screen one last time here. I want to reshare our numbers here. Move, move. All right. And please know, guys, this is not me like boasting or anything. I want you to see an honest, true story of somebody who's been in the business four years, six and a half million dollars in volume, nearly two hundred dollars in gross commission income before after after all of our commission splits and stuff, this number is greatly reduced, but it's still a good good chunk of change there. And we are about a quarter of the way through the year. If you're not happy with where you are a quarter of the way through the year, you still have time to impact it, but it starts today. Hopefully this was good to see what somebody who's a step ahead of you guys is doing. I wanna open it up now for questions in regards to anything at all. Uh, you can ask, ask me to get vulnerable, I totally will, but shoot some questions out there, what you all got. What's a good place to get numbers for cold calls? A uh, power dialer is a great place to go. And that's why we use a third party site called Mojo. There's also Red X. Those are two websites that are probably the most prevalent. You can literally circle a neighborhood and it will automatically bring up any phone records affiliated with those addresses. How they get these phone numbers, I have no idea. Are a lot of them on the do not call federal registry list? Yes. So you can't call all of them, but you can still get a lot of phone numbers from that way. Additionally, something that I didn't talk about at all is door knocking. Like you can go door knock and over time you will get phone numbers because people will want you to give them information about stuff that's upcoming, right? So the best way to do it though is through a third party app called either Mojo or Red X. That cost is about $99 a month plus a $50 a month fee to look up all the phone numbers. But the resource, the tool there, especially for a person who works another job, Nicole, like yourself, the value there is the time save and the amount of opportunities that you have to make contacts in a condensed amount of time. Me and my team, we, we use Mojo to make a lot of phone calls in a short amount of time. We can, if, if our average... If our goal every week is to make 100 real estate contacts and we only want to work five days a week, 100 divided by five is 20 contacts per day. I can make 100 contact or I can make 20 contacts through Mojo normally in about an hour, hour and a half. 
So that gives you some good insight into that. There is a cost affiliated, obviously, with it. And I want to encourage you, don't go buy it yourself. I'm trying to get it supplied by a third-party vendor like a mortgage company, a mortgage lender, or a title company down in Kentucky. So more to come on that. Great question. What other questions are out there? So in the meantime, while we're waiting for something like that, um, what is like the process to go through? I mean, because it's a lot of work to go check the do not call list and, and all no, of they that. Do it, they do it for you. They, they filter it for you. Does that help? Well, that helps when, once we have access to that, but up until then, you know, until then, any numbers we have are, are able call to them. come up with. Call them. You don't go research the federal do not call list. If you've got a phone number, call it. And if it, they say, I'm on the do not call list, well, I'm so sorry. I'll let you know. I didn't have the do not call list, so I apologize, and I will immediately take you off my records. Uh, that's the script there. Beg for forgiveness, plead ignorance, because you don't, you're not going to go look. At, I don't encourage you to take time looking up who you can't call. Just call them. That's a great call out, by the way, Selena, because we do want to be compliant. We don't want to call people we're not supposed to call. To Alex's point, Lauren has had this experience as well. They will let you know if you call somebody by mistake. And when you do, don't make, don't make it a long conversation. Get off the phone and move on to the next call. Don't let them scare you. Odds are they're not going to come sue you or anything. Just apologize. Say, I'll take you off my list. Have a nice day. Click. What other questions, comments, concerns, uh, issues you're having, things getting in your way of getting your business going? If there's no questions, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you up. Jessica, I see you're on. Jessica, I'm really excited for you. Jessica literally just got her license this week. She's gonna get her paperwork done tomorrow. We're excited to have her. Yay, Jessica. Um, Nicole, super glad that you can make it today. I know you've you've not been able to make a lot of these in the past. Uh, and then Jayla, I, I believe I, I just met you today. You're interested in getting into real estate, so I'm excited that you're able to jump on. Hopefully, these these, these calls are gonna be. Uh, empowering to you to realize that if Josh can do it, trust me, trust me, y'all can do it. It's just a matter of being disciplined and tracking your results. Did you notice a lot of these forms were just tracking forms so that I can get a historical um, idea of what's working and what's not working? The, uh, the resources that I use are Google Sheets. I like those because I can pull them up from any computer. I don't have to be on my own computer on an Excel spreadsheet. I can just be on a Google sheet and I can pull that up on my phone if I wanted to add something right then and there. Or I can be on any device, any part of the world. And my way is not the, it's not my way or the highway. What works for me, works for me. Well, if you've got something else that works for you, God bless you. Go do it. All right. I'm going to one last call for any questions at all, any comments, any concerns. All right. You've got 13 minutes of your precious time back. Now go put some of these things to use. The key takeaways here, remember, Update your command profile. Start a transaction management grid of some sort. 
And last but not least, track your contacts and how you're getting them each week. If you're using a scratch piece of paper, great, but it's, it's not perfect at all. Use something that's either electronic or more stable, like a notebook that you have for just lead generation. Something that you can go back to and review. Cool? Well, have a great day, guys. Go Tiger Woods and uh, have a great weekend. Bye.